Okay, so on this assignment, we are given a certain quadrilateral, a trapezoid, parallelogram, isosceles trapezoid, kite, square, rectangle, rhombus. Um, there are seven of them. But so we're told which quadrilateral we are dealing with. And then um, we're given a table with uh, distances and slopes, and uh, we're supposed to fill in the table. Okay, um, so on problem number one, we're only missing one value, PS. But we're told it's a trapezoid, so let's start there. Um, a trapezoid, uh, in a trapezoid, exactly one pair of opposite sides are parallel. So we're looking for one pair of sides to be parallel. That's really all we know about the sides of a trapezoid. Now remember, um, okay, so each one of these represents the sides of a trapezoid. Okay, so as far as slope goes, um, remember that if, if two sides are parallel, they should have the same slope. Okay, the same slope. Um, so, so far we're given all of these slopes but none of them are the same. That tells us that the remaining slope must be the same as the opposite side. The remaining slope must be the parallel one since none of these uh, opposite sides are, are parallel. Now because these are listed in order, um, you know, uh, sides that are right next to each other would be right next to each other in the picture. So, I mean, the idea is like this. Say if I, if this is P, Q, R, S. P, Q, and Q, R are right next to each other. P, Q, and Q, R. On the other hand, P, Q, and R, S are opposite sides. So, P, Q, and R, S would be opposite sides like these. Um, so, the point is, even looking at this chart, um, if you skip a row, you're looking at opposite sides. So um, PQ and RS are opposite sides. They are not parallel, which means that um, QR and PS must be the parallel pair. Okay, QR and PS, something has to be parallel. There has to be one pair of parallel sides in a trapezoid. And this is the only one that's left open. So um, QR and PS must be the parallel opposite sides. And if they're parallel, they have the same slope. So what should be the slope of side PS then? PS must be slope of one third to match QR. Um, that's the only way this is going to be a trapezoid. OK, um, look at number two. Number two is a parallelogram. Now remember, if we're dealing with a parallelogram, then uh, we have a bunch of things that are true. Um, but for starters, opposite sides are parallel. Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So let's deal with that first of all. If, um, if the opposite sides are parallel, then the slopes should be the same for all opposite sides. Okay, so for example, um, opposite sides are QR and uh, PS are opposite sides. And in a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel. So if QR has slope of negative one-third, then PS has slope of negative one-third. All right, if opposite sides are parallel, so the slope should be the same. Um, but in the same way, PQ and RS are opposite sides. And they should also be parallel. And parallel lines have slopes that are equal. So if RS has slope 2 thirds, then PQ must have slope 2 thirds. OK, so that's the slopes. Now let's deal with the distances. Now, of course, the distances are the lengths of the sides. And one of the properties of a parallelogram is that opposite sides are congruent. So 
these opposite sides should have equal length. Um, so again, PQ and RS are opposite sides. So if, uh, if PQ has length radical 13, then RS has length radical 13. And QR and PS are opposite sides. So since PS has length radical 10, QR must have length radical 10. Okay, opposite sides are congruent. All right, now let's look at our isosceles trapezoid. Okay, there's our trapezoid. All right, an isosceles trapezoid, we still have one pair of sides that are parallel, and the, those are called the bases. Okay, so this would be a base, and this would be a base. All right, the bases are parallel. Now the other two sides are called legs. All right, and for an isosceles trapezoid, um, the definition is that the legs are congruent. Okay, this leg and this leg have to be equal length. That's what makes it isosceles, the trapezoid with congruent legs. Okay, so looking at this diagram, um, now, of course, the bases should be parallel to each other, okay? In a trapezoid, we're talking about, come back, trapezoid, okay? The bases are parallel to each other, um, so that means their slopes should be the same. So looking at this chart, these must be the bases. Base, base. What in the world am I doing? Okay, in fact, I think I'll write it over here. Um, these must be the bases. QR and PS must be the bases. Okay, I know that they're the bases because um, they're parallel. They have the same slope, so these are parallel. Um, that means that PQ and RS must be the legs. All right, so this must be a leg, and this must be an ele a leg. Now, in an isosceles trapezoid, the legs should be the same length. So if this leg is 3 radical 3, then this leg must be 3 radical 3. So that's how you do that. All right, let's look at number four, kite. A kite looks like this. Consecutive sides are congruent, meaning the sides that are touching are congruent. But opposite sides, like these, are not congruent. So consecutive sides congruent, opposite sides not congruent. Okay? Um, so, looking at this chart, consecutive sides have to be congruent. So looking at um, PQ, for example, um, PQ and QR are consecutive sides. Um, so it's possible that those are the sides that could be congruent. But also PQ and PS. Um, they are also consecutive sides, okay, because it, it all wraps around. So PQ and PS are consecutive sides. Um, but since we already know that PQ and PS are not the same, um, so we know that those consecutive sides are not the ones that are the same. So in that case, it must be, um, it must be the PQ and QR are the consecutive sides that are the same. So QR must be radical 10. Consecutive sides are the same. Um, the other pair of consecutive sides, obviously, is RS and PS. These are consecutive sides. Consecutive means they're touching. They're right next to each other. Um, so this must be 3 radical 10. Okay, and that's it for number four. 
Now, of course, a square. Um, one thing we know about a square is that all four sides are congruent. So if we know that one side is radical 10, that means all four sides must be radical 10. Okay, brrrp, they all must be radical 10. Now, as far as the slopes, let's stop and think for a second. All right, a square not only has four congruent sides, um, because that makes it a rhombus, right? But it also has four right angles, because a square is also, whoops, too far. A square is also a rectangle. All right, remember, a square is a rhombus and a rectangle at the same time. So a square is something that has a, um, it's going to have uh, four congruent sides and four right angles. Okay, so. So anyway, um, so we know that the, uh, the corners, the, uh, the corners are 90 degree angles. That means that consecutive sides are perpendicular. All right, that is crucial. Um, if sides are perpendicular, I hope you'll remember that that means that the slopes are going to be opposite and reciprocal. So for example, remember, like if this side has slope of 2 thirds, then this side would have slope negative 3 over 2, for example. All right, perpendicular, 90 degrees, the slopes will be opposite in sign and reciprocal, meaning upside down. Okay, so keep that in mind. So these slopes, um, for sides that are right next to each other, they have to be perpendicular. So the slopes should be opposite and reciprocal. Um, so, keeping that in mind, what is the opposite sign and reciprocal for three? Well, this is positive, so we know it's gotta be negative something. Um, three is the same thing as like three over one. So what's the reciprocal of that? Should be one over three. Okay. Um, uh, so from there, we know that the, uh, the opposite sides should have the same slope. I mean, this uh, square is a parallelogram, so um, all of the opposite sides should have the same slope. So these should match. Okay, because those are opposite sides. So if this is three, then this is going to be three. Um, but also, these should match. Okay, because opposite sides are parallel. So if that's negative one third, then this is negative one third. So that's how you do number five. Okay, so opposite sides are parallel, slopes the same. But consecutive sides in the square are perpendicular. They're forming those 90 degree angles. Okay. Um, so here's a little summary of everything I just said. Um, now for a rectangle, this time all of the sides are not the same length, but opposite sides should be the same length. So PQ and RS, those are opposite sides, they should have the same length. So since this is 2 radical 5, then this should be 2 radical 5. Okay, um, opposite sides have the same length. So QR and PS are opposite sides, so they should have the same length. So if this is radical 5, then this should be also radical 5. Um, and then the slopes. Again, a rectangle, that means 90 degree angles. Okay, I should have four 90 degree angles. That means all of these consecutive sides should be perpendicular. So uh, once again, these should be opposite and reciprocal. Okay, so if this is negative 2, then this should be positive 1 half. Okay, and again, it's because these should be perpendicular. 
all right? I'm just going to put the symbol for perpendicular, all right? But that's opposite and reciprocal. Uh, and the same thing should be happening down here. If, if this is negative 2, then this should be 1 half. And this should be negative 2, okay? Notice that opposite sides are parallel. So these should be the same. Okay, opposite sides are parallel, they are the same, but consecutive sides are perpendicular, so they're opposite and reciprocal. Okay, moving on. Alright, finally, 7, 8, and 9. Rhombus. A rhombus is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides, like this. That's all we know about a rhombus is that it has four congruent sides. Um, since every rhombus is a parallelogram, we do know that um, opposite sides will be parallel. So we should expect opposite sides to have the same slope. But, okay, first things first. Um, so we're dealing with a rhombus here. We know that all these lengths should be the same because that's what makes it a rhombus. Okay, so if one side is radical 10, they've all got to be radical 10. Um, all four sides are congruent. Now, opposite, opposite sides should be parallel. A rhombus is a parallelogram. So um, these are opposite sides, so they should be parallel. Uh, so if that one's 3, this is 3. And these are opposite sides. So they should be parallel. If that's negative 3, then this should be negative 3. Okay, let's talk parallelogram. All right, in a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent and uh, opposite sides are parallel. Okay, so here again, um, QR and PS will be opposite sides. So if QR is 2 radical 10, then PS should be 2 radical 10. Um, PQ and RS are opposite sides. Okay, so PQ and RS are opposite sides. If this is radical 10, then this should be radical 10. Okay, opposite sides are also parallel. So these are opposite sides. So if this is 3, this will be 3. And one more time, these are opposite sides. So if this is negative 3, then this must be negative 3. Okay, notice these do not have to be reciprocal because this is a parallelogram, not a rectangle. These don't make a 90 degrees. They don't have to make 90 degrees. Okay. Finally, um, we have one more kite. Remember that in a kite, we have consecutive sides that are congruent. But opposite sides are not going to be congruent. Consecutive sides, meaning the sides that are right next to each other, are congruent. OK, so um, QR and RS are consecutive sides. But 2 radical 2, 2 radical 5, these consecutive sides are not congruent. That means it must be the other pair of consecutive sides that are congruent. So um, these consecutive sides must be congruent. So if this is 2 radical 2, this must be 2 radical 2. Um, these must be the consecutive sides that are congruent. If this is 2 radical 2, I mean 2 radical 5, then this must be 2 radical 5. Okay, notice that um, in a kite, opposite sides are not congruent. QR and PS are opposite sides, 2 radical 2 and 2 radical 5. These cannot be congruent in a kite. Opposite sides will never be congruent in a kite.